the poem Once Upon Time by Gabriel Okara. Now, Gabriel Okara uh, is a Nigerian poet. Okara is a Nigerian poet. A non-English uh, colonial era poet uh, of Nigeria. Now in this poem, Okara uh, discusses uh, the breakdown of a Nigerian society in terms of uh, social and human values uh, along with time under the influence of uh, foreign culture. Uh, you know, this Nigeria was also under uh, British rule for a long time. And because of this uh, foreign ruling and culture, the Nigerian traditional culture, their values, way of life, their thinking, even their language, they came under change. Okara is not happy about this change because this change is not positive. This change is negative. Now in this poem, uh, he speaks to his uh, little son. He speaks to his little son is considerably a long poem, but very simple, easy to understand. Uh, his uh, little boy is his listener. Uh, he describes to this little boy uh, comparatively the nature of past society and the nature of present society. Right? in a comparative way. Two societies are compared here. Two group of people are compared here. Past, present. The poet is not really happy about his present society and people. He is nostalgic about the past society and past people because they, according to the poem, Okara's past people had good human values, social values. They were not corrupted. They were honest in expressing their feelings, in their association with other people. They were open-hearted. Even their smile was genuine, really honest. Their smile represents, reflect their heart. But in the present society, <clears throat> Okara comments that he does not find such situation. People are no more open-hearted. People are no more honest. Their smile is no more genuine. Genuine, even natural. They have pretended smile. Okay. 
Now let's see how Okara paints this picture of past society, pictures of past society and the present society in this poem. You see the title, Once Upon Time. Once Upon Time. Now this gives us the idea that he is going to narrate a story. Tell us a story, especially to his son. I told you his son is the listener. He's going to tell his son a story of past people and the story of present people. Uh, to educate his little son about this change of people's values. Uh, once upon a time. Once upon a time, son, they used to laugh with their hearts and laugh with their eyes. But now they only laugh with their teeth while their eyes block cold eyes search behind my shadow. Right. Now let's go line by line. Once upon a time, a long time ago, my son, the poet says, once upon a time means long time ago, they used to laugh with their hearts. They means people of the past, people of the past. That is the contextual meaning. People of the past. Hmm. They used to laugh. Now, Okara describes their laugh, their smile, with their hearts. What is the idea here? With their hearts means open-heartedly, honestly. Hmm. Open-heartedly, honestly. Their smiles. Mm. Their smiles were quite genuine. Mm. Quite genuine. Mm. Genuine smiles. Honest smiles. They are not pretended smiles. Not false smiles. Their smile really comes from their heart. Their smile really expresses their smile really expresses their feelings. Right? That is the idea. And laugh with their eyes. And even these people, when they laugh, when they smile, with their eyes, their eyes reflect. Eyes reflect emotions, their true feelings. Mm. Eyes reflect. Mm. Eyes reflect the feelings of the heart. The feelings of the heart. Right? Feelings of the heart. Right? Now their eyes are like mirrors, mirrors, like mirrors, their eyes show the true nature of their eyes and heart. Now what is the idea? Okara comments that the people of past society, they were really real. They were really honest. They were not pretended false characters. Their every action was honest. Mm. Not fake. F-A-K-E, fake. Then he contrasts those people with 
the people of the present society. Right? Contrasting. Now this, uh, in the first answer, there is a contrast between the past people and society and the present people and society. But now, now means present time, they laugh with their only teeth. They means this day they refer to people of the present society. Not it down. People of the present society laugh with their teeth. Now, what is the with their teeth? Ah, now, past people with their hearts. You know the meaning. Open-heartedly, honestly, genuine, not pretended. But with their teeth means this laugh or smile is not honest. Dishonest. Dishonest. Hmm? Pretended. Pretended. Even mechanical. You know mechanical. Hmm? Not natural. Fake. You see, laugh with their teeth. Their eyes, they do not express the true feelings of the heart. While their eyes, eyes block cold eyes. What is the idea? Eyes block cold eyes means dead eyes. Dead eyes. Right? Dead eyes. No expression of feelings. No expression of... No expression of feelings. Now compare the eyes of the past people. They express feelings of the heart, but the eyes of the modern people, they are dead. They never express, they never express mm, true feelings of the heart. Mm. Modern people, they hide what they think, right? They never show the truth to society. And what they do? Search behind my shadow. Now you see this word, my shadow. My shadow. Hmm? My shadow. It's a metaphor. Now shadow means emptiness. What is the idea of shadow? Emptiness. One idea is emptiness. Hmm. No ah, soul. Hmm. No soul. No life and heart. Hmm. Now, what is the idea? The poet comments that modern people. People of present society, including himself, are merely shadows, empty people. There is nothingness. They have no soul. They have no life and heart. They are just empty people. Mm. Right? Search behind my shadow. But these people, they are curious about each other. They are not curious, interested in themselves, but they are interested in other people. Right? This is another uh, breakdown of 
value in modern society, modern people. Instead of looking into themselves, they look into others' lives. Others' lives. Right? But past people never had such a quality, my dear son. Right? Now, that is the idea of this first stanza. He's educating his young son about the two kinds of people, the past, the present, right? He goes on describing things, right? Now look at this one. There was time indeed there was a good time, my dear son. Underline, they used to shake hands with their hearts. They used to shake with their hands. Now here again they refer, they refers to people of the past society. They used to shake hands. Handshake. Now, what is the symbolic meaning of handshake? Symbolic meaning. Yes. You symbol, you handshake with others. What is symbolic meaning? Friendship. One meaning is friendship. Right? Unity. Unity. Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Mm. Handshake. Mm. Friendship, unity, brotherhood. Sharing. Sharing. Mm. Sharing. Mm. Right? That's why we shake hands. Sometimes cooperation. There are so many meanings, corporations. Uh, that is the idea of offering your hand to someone else. Someone else. Right? They used to shake hands with their hearts. Now you know the meaning of with their hearts. Showing their true feelings. Showing their true feelings. Right? Showing their true feelings. Then the poet in a nostalgic, sorrowful tone, he says, but that's gone, son. My dear son, we do not have that handshake in present society. Hmm. That handshake we do not have. Today's handshake is merely a pretense, merely a show. Only an action without feelings, without heart. Now they shake hands without hearts. What is the idea? It's only an action without feelings. These feelings are not expressed. Feelings of friendship, unity, brotherhood, sharing, cooperation, even love. Huh? Nothing expressed. It's only a mechanical act. Mechanical act. People just shake hands without expressing true feelings of their hearts. Right? True feelings of their hearts. The poet is worried about this situation. Worried about this situation. Why? People are no more friendly. People are no more brothers. People are no more sharing, caring for each other. There is no cooperation between them. There is no brotherhood. No unity. Lost. They are the lost values. Lost values. He is worried about this. While they are searched, while their left hand search my empty pockets, 
uh, they offer right hand for shake. At the same time, they use their left hand to search the other's empty pockets. This is also a metaphor, like the uh, phrase, my shadow. Again, emptiness. Mm. Emptiness of these values. Mm. Empty pocket means, empty pocket simply means no money. But here it does not mean money. Here mean good moral values. My pockets are not full of good moral values. What is this emptiness? Emptiness of moral values. Mm. Emptiness mm. of moral values. Mm. Good moral values. Mm. Good values. Good qualities, in other words. Mm. Right? Emptiness of good values. Moral values. All people have empty pockets. Their pockets are empty with good moral values. Now these people of the present society, they look for other moral values. They don't think, they don't think that they have also lost their moral values, but they are interested, they are speaking, they are criticizing, they are critical on other people's loss of moral values. Right. They search my empty pocket. They never search their empty pocket. They think of other people's breakdown of moral values. Right. The poet is not happy about this situation. Okay. Now the first and the second stanzas mainly deal with the people of the past, the people of the present in a contrastive way, in a comparative way. Now, from the third stanza onwards, the poet turns to himself, towards himself. It's a self-criticism, self-confession, self-confession about the decadence of his moral values. This poet represents all people of his society, contemporary society. Huh? Okara represents people of his contemporary society. They are values, they are way of life. Now he explains, feel at home, he turns to society again. Come again, they say, when I come and again I feel at home once or twice, there will be no thrice. For then I found, I find those shut on me. Right? Feel at home. Now when a visitor come in modern societies, to a modern society's home, house. People say feel at home. But the idea of feel at home, think this is your own house. Uh, you can stay, live in this house as you like. That is the idea, feel at home. Uh, come again. They even invite the visitor to visit again. Uh, when they leave home, they say, when I come again and feel at home, for it says, when I come again and feel at home, try to use the house as my house once or twice. There will be no thrice. There will be no third time. They shut the door for me. Now this is decadence of modern societies, hospitality, friendship, brotherhood, sharing. Uh, a visitor, a relative 
he is welcome once or twice and when the same visitor visit that house for the third time the door is shut he or she is not welcome loss of relationship you understand in modern societies people have become much more selfish isolated huh? and they do not care for other people they do not think of keeping up building up relationships they try to live a selfish life within their own uh, unit of house and family they never open their doors to other people but in the past society it was different my son the doors of the houses were open to everyone people freely go and come out they had nice relationship strong relationship between each and everyone mm. every time they visit the house they are welcome but in present society that is different that value is not there my dear son right then he begins his confession self confession what does he say so i have learned so i have learned many things so i have learned many things hmm? what are these many things many things uh many things simply imply many new moral values of the present society many new moral values new moral values of the present society many new moral values of the present society right many things now we can understand we know that poet represents his society the poet also represents those values of that society that's why he confesses he open heartedly says now i also have learned those values my son i do not have the values of the past people i am a modern man with modern values he is not happy about this situation that's why he confesses hmm. i have learned to wear many faces now here many faces many faces means many character roles i am not me i am not me i am someone else many faces in simple terms this means people of the present society they play different roles different characters hiding their true nature right true nature real nature they cover up their real nature by superficial false characters now many faces mean these false characters every person one person has so many false characters before society they pretend they pretend to be he or she pretends to be someone else huh someone else they do not show their true nature true character now if i take some examples what are these faces many characters hmm. 
right? I have learned to wear a dress. He compares them to a kind of change in dress. Like change in dress. Present people can change their appearance and may have false appearance before society. This is true. Uh, in our society, there are many people, they have their false appearance, not their true appearance. They have hidden, covered up their true appearance. Home face. At home, I am a different person. Office face. When I go to my work, duty, I have another role, character. A street face. When I walk in the street, someone else. I am someone else. Hot face. Host. Host means uh, somebody who welcomes visitors to home. Uh, when somebody comes home, I say, feel at home, come again. That is host face. Cocktail face. Mixture of everything. Cocktail means sometimes I am mixture of everything. <laughs> you see, he criticizes himself. <laughs> my son, my dear, I am not me. <laughs> I am someone else. Hmm? I have learned to be someone else. Okara says, I have learned to be someone else. Hmm? With all their confirming, matching smiles, and these faces have their definite pattern of smile. Uh, when I am at office, my smile is office smile. When I am at home, my smile is home smile. Uh, when I am the host, my smile is host smile. Uh, when I am in the street, my smile is street smile. Hmm? Confirming smiles. For each character, there is uh, its own way of smiling. My smile is like, he used the simile. Fixed portrait smile. My smile is not genuine. My smile is not natural. It's a mechanical smile showing my teeth. It's like a smile of a picture, human picture. Now you have seen photos, human photos with smiles. Uh, politician smiles you have seen in political propaganda posters. Uh, in those posters, there are politicians with big smiles. But that smile is not genuine, not really real. Quite comments. I have a smile like that. Not the smile of the past people. Right. Then he further mentions, and I have learned too. I have learned too. Hmm? What? To laugh with only my teeth, my dear son. Now I can laugh. Show with my teeth. Without showing my heart, I have learned. I can hide my true feelings. And I can show false feelings. This is hypocrisy. Hmm? Modern man's hypocrisy. Right? Modern society is hypocrisy. Pretends. Showing something else, hiding the truth. Showing something else, what is the meaning of hypocrisy? Showing something else, hiding the truth. Hypocrisy. Modern society is hypocritical. Modern man is hypocritical. They never show their true feelings. They show fake feelings. Hiding true feelings. To laugh with my teeth. Right? And also, I have learned to shake hands without my heart. He says, 
Now, my dear son, my handshake is no more friendly. Huh? No more friendly. Hmm? It does not show any cooperation, brotherhood, not brotherly. Hmm? It's a mechanical handshake. I have also learned to say goodbye. Now I can say goodbye again, hypocrisy. Goodbye means, what is the meaning of goodbye? God be with you. God be with you. This is the idea of goodbye. God bless you in simple terms. Ah. When these words are combined together, we pronounce it as goodbye along with time. Ah. Now you wish a person leaving from you goodbye. God be with you. You speak. Past people spoke it ah, from within the heart. They really meant what they said. They really meant what they said. Hmm? Past people. But modern, present people, they do not really mean what they say. They say goodbye. God be with you. But they mean good riddance. Good riddance. Thanks for leaving. I am happy for your leaving. Hmm? You have become a great nuisance. So I am very happy for your leaving. They never mean God be with you. This is again hypocrisy. Uh, double nature. Double character of present man. They have lost this value. They never wish a person in its true sense. In its true sense. They have a false sense. Then I can say, what? Glad to see you. Hmm? Glad to see you. Right? Without being glad. Glad means happy. Happy to see you. Now, when you meet a person, after a long time, you say, you wish, you greet each other. I am very glad to see you. I am very happy to see you. But really you are not happy. Really you are not glad. This is another hypocrisy. Mm. It's nice talking to you. It's happy to talk to you. Mm. After being bored. After being not interested. Not happy to talk to you. Hypocrisy. Bored means not interested. Not happy. Being bored. Unhappy. I was unhappy. It was not nice to meet you. But we say, nice to meet you. Nice to talk into you. Right? What is the simple idea? Greetings, even the greetings of the modern people are fake, not genuine. You say good morning, but you never mean a good morning for that person. You mechanically say good morning, good afternoon, uh, good night, uh, all those things. They never come from your heart. This is hypocrisy. Even the greetings are not genuine. The poet comments, criticizes this breakdown of values. Huh. Now, what? Okara is not really happy about this situation of his society and of himself. There is a complete decadence. D-E-C-A-D-E-N-C-E. -E -E -E, decadence. Decadence means breakdown. Uh, wash away. Mm. Complete wash away of good values. But believe me, son. Now he says, he speaks to his son, we know. Believe my son. Underline, 
I want to be what I used to be when I was like you. This is very important. Unline these words. I want to be what I used to be when I was like you. When I was like you. Now there's a comparison between the poet and the son. What does he mean? I used to be, I used to be. Now idea is this. The poet means the little children of his society are still not corrupted, not bad. They are still innocent. They have still the human goodness of in their hearts. The little children still have all those good values. The little children are honest, genuine, truthful. They are sympathetic, sincere, mm, open-hearted, mm, loving. They are sharing and caring. All those good qualities are within the children yet. When they become elders, adults, they become corrupted. But as a child, they have those lost values hidden in their hearts. Therefore now the poet wants to be a child again, go back to his childhood and to relearn everything, the lost values. I want to unlearn, unlearn means forget all these mutant things, ugly values. Mutant things means ugly values, unpleasant values. I want to unlearn, forget, delete all these ugly values, unpleasant values, and to be a really real human like a child. Mm, like a child. Most of all, I want to relearn, learn again, he emphasizes, how to laugh. I want to learn how to laugh honestly. I have forgotten my genuine, honest laugh now, smile now. I want to relearn that. Why? Why does he want to relearn that genuine smile? Because he is ashamed of his present smile. He does not like his present smile. He comments that my smile present life, smile of my present life, when I look in the mirror and smile, I show my teeth like snakes bear fangs. You see the simile, snake bear fangs, hmm? the danger or dangerous image or ugly image of this smile. The poet compares himself to a smiling snake. I am like a snake, my son, poisonous snake, venomous snake. I have my fangs. Fangs means teeth. Bare fangs. Open teeth. I show my snake-like teeth. Fangs. Now snake is symbolic of uh, corrupted values. Bad values. Now I am a snake with the poison of venom of Corrupted values, the poet says. Huh? Now I can inject this value, uh, snake, uh, sorry, this poison. I, I can inject this venom of corrupted values into someone else. I can make him or her corrupted too. Right? I can kill a man's good values. I can kill a man's good values. That is the idea. 
Now I am ashamed of my situation, my dear son. I don't like my present life. I laugh like a snake. Then he has a request to his son. What is the request? Show me, son. Please, my dear son. Show me. Show me the way. How to laugh. Show me. Teach me. He requests the little son. Now, child is the father of mankind. That is the idea here. Because children can teach so many things to elders. Children can teach so many things to elders. You may remember the short story, The Lumber Room. How Nicholas teaches uh, how to be a good mother, good aunt, good caretaker uh, to the children. Now here the same idea is here. This poet, Okara, requests his son to teach him how to laugh, how to smile, open-hearted. Show me how I used to laugh. How I used to laugh like a child. As a child, he laughed or smiled open-heartedly. But now as an adult, his laugh is corrupted. And smile once upon time when I was like you. This is the request. Father's request to his son. My dear son, as an elder I am corrupted. I have bad values. As a child you have good values. Please teach me. That is a simple idea. Please teach me how to be a person like you. He respects his little son. He honors his little son because he is not yet corrupted. He is still with good human values. But later he will be a corrupted man when he becomes an elder. Right. Now in this way, Okara in very nice, critical as well as critical way, he discusses the decadence of good human values in his society, in the heart, people's hearts. Hmm. By comparing his contemporary men and women to the past men and women. Past men and women. He is not happy about this situation. He is worried, disappointed, and even nostalgic about the lost values. Now that is the idea of this poem. Once upon time. 